Okay, so, hello, this is my first recording attempt. Um, so here we are drawing this out with a washable marker. Always be sure to use a washable marker because if you don't, it will for sure mess up your end result. I've done it before, so be careful not to do that. Um, right here, I was just drawing a random shape, honestly, to where I wanted it to somewhat look like a flower or like a shooting star, maybe like a magic wand. So that's what I got. And this is a mirror folded shirt. So with the mirror fold, it separates the front of the shirt and the back of the shirt. So right now you see I am fan folding on the mirror folded shirt on the washable marker line that I just had drawn. And pretty much you just keep um, following that line. You know, you wanna just keep it as tight as possible and um, follow it through and through. That's where you're gonna put your main tie is gonna be there. And yes, you always wanna keep, uh, keep it as flat as possible. That way when you apply the dye, it will be as close to the shape that you were drawing as possible to where if you get too loose without um, following that line then the shape that you're trying to have come out in the die will not be the same I've done that before as well um, I like to use mint not mint wax floss stupid I like to use floss so it doesn't have to be mint it could be mint or not um, but yeah so um, this one is mint so it actually smells good too so it's a double benefit um, so around the first wraparound, I like to go pretty, uh, pretty heavy. That way the line that comes out at the end result is very bold. If you do it too thin, it won't be as defined. So give it a couple wraparounds, you know, uh, be generous with the stuff because that'll give you the best finish at the end. And then I'm just going to go over and wrap around a few more times. Uh, these are all going to be detailed lines at the end. Um, right here, I went a little bit heavy with it, so you can go this heavy. That's the beauty of using the floss is that it does not strangle the fabric. So when you do apply the dye, it actually makes it very absorbent. And so it's really good to use the floss. Um, people like to use sinew nylon and I use these as well rubber bands but I think that lately the floss floss and fishing line the really thin fishing line are the best ones for leaving the fabric ready to absorb the dye when you use sinew it's great it's strong it doesn't break it gives good detail lines but it does not let the fabric absorb dye very well all right, anyway, so right here we're doing a uh, mirror fold, um, and I'm just doing a basic another fan fold here for the spine. So this was just a random shape that I do I made, which was just uh, pretty much in a wavy pattern, and you'll see that at the end. And then again, yep, just go with the whatever your string is. Like I said, I prefer to use floss for this first step. And I'll explain why later. Um, but yeah, so just go heavy on that first tie, like you see me doing right here, and be generous with it. And then just, you know, you don't have to be too exact with it. You could just wrap around as how you see fit, whatever patterns look cool to you. Uh, and those will come up as detail lines at the end of your tie dye project. And so yeah, here I'm going wrapping around that original spot again, and that's gonna give you a really bold separation in color. Um, you could either come back over it with black or just leave it and it'll come out a real defined white line um, at the end of it. And so now here I kind of scrunch up the body like in a trip style and go again with the floss just go wrapping it around wrapping it around these are just going to be more detailed lines at the end of the dye application um, process and 
yeah so it's always something different you know it's um not you don't have to be too robotronic with it you could be pretty just fluid with it um whatever feels right um you know after you do this a few times you'll get the hang of it um that's why i'm able to kind of just do it quickly um always try to go at your own pace of course um here we go and that's what it was look like tied and all those lines on there are going to be really nice detail lines so keep that in mind and here we go i'm applying the dye uh different uh video clip of course um this is a uh, lemon yellow and i don't know if you can tell in the video but i'm really putting a lot of uh dye down right here and so I would advise to do the same, be generous. And that's the beauty of using the floss is that it leaves the fabric able to absorb a lot of the dye to where the finish uh, will thank you. And so yeah, I just go around and go back around, um, you know, until I'm happy with the amount of it. I like to use the lightest colors first, of course, so yellow is usually my first round and then right here I'm using orange and that's a orange color that I made myself using lemon yellow and rose red one part lemon yellow three parts rose red and ten parts water hot water boiling hot water maybe a little bit less than boiling but as hot as possible without burning your hand and so the reason I'm going with uh, the orange right on top of the yellow is that way the transition is good between those two colors and right here we're going with emerald green again try to use complementing colors next to each other so I know that um, yellow and green go good together because they'll make a different shade of green um, here we go on with magenta to where with these lighter colors you want to go really heavy um, because they have the tendency to kind of fade out with the darker colors this is royal purple one of my favorite colors I go pretty heavy on the royal purple in this application and you don't got to be too liberal with it you could be pretty uh, you know happy handed and then peacock green and again you try to keep the colors consistent in a way that they're gonna complement each other you know so put your reds next to your blues your blues next to your yellows things like that you know uh, your purples next to your blues to make different shades of purple and just you know be have fun with it and keep on practicing here we go here's the finished result notice that a uh, bold detail line in white around it that's where that heavy tie comes in and this is the front of it there's that a uh, flower shape that I was talking about notice all the different uh, colors that complement thank you for taking the time to watch this video if you have any questions comments or concerned please uh, feel free to drop them in the comments and uh, I'll get back to you if you have any questions let me know um, I hope this video helped please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content have a great day and tie-dye the world all right bye